Hello, Lilas. <laughs> I am back with Jersey, and I'm gonna try to get Jersey dressed. Um, oh, these guys. <laughs> I got these socks, and I just realized they got little bows on the side, but I was just looking at the actual color to use. And I may still use them, because it won't show under there, but we'll see. But, um, so as you guys know, I've been buying a few babies that actually have been painted by other artists which has been fun because it feels good to you know like I say all the time get babies from other artists this baby is one that I did not paint um he is done by pickles and tea which is Asha and he is the Jude sculpt by Oka R and I named him Jersey and when I like something or I want something um I I pretty much like um to buy from artists things that I think is that have different paint styles for me or you know maybe reach different skin tones that I don't reach or can't reach or haven't got there yet or not comfortable with it and um you know we are as human we're not perfect and so we're always but we always you know we're always gonna it's always gonna be something like oh I, I like this this way I like that that way but with this I feel like you know it is it is a form of art and I just really enjoy I just really enjoy being able to you know collect other babies um some sometimes people think that because of the dolls that i used to collect in the you know in the past you know i've, I've collect collected some very very exquisite and expensive dolls and a lot of people think that i am just gonna be like so super picky um, there are some things that really, really will bother me. And then I will, you know, I might sell the doll. Or, but there are sometimes there are things that I may not particularly love. But if there are things that I love more and it, and it doesn't break the doll for me or the way I feel about the doll for me, I will... I will be okay with it. But the one thing that I, since I started painting, that I've been trying to be very, very careful about is trying not to be the one to try to break another artist. Um, business or ex you know or their confidence or any of that because i know how it feels to be done and it it some are stronger some people are stronger than others and they're like oh i don't care or whatever but if you really do this from your heart or you really do it because you really love doing making these babies it is very very hard. oh my god he looks so cute in that it is very very hard for you to say that and really be telling the truth that you don't care because as rough as i may seem across around the edges except for the times when i'm boohoo crying <laughs> in front of y'all um i don't like the way that feel and it, it it does bother me but will it bother me enough to make me stop probably not but will it bother me enough to make me go harder and try to be better absolutely and that's what I think sometimes though that where people are rooting to tear you apart and and break you they actually kind of make you stronger in who you are because when Apart, when people critique you, you can do 
one or two things. You can take it and say I'm not good enough. And you or you can too take it and say I can do better. And I'm going to fix this even if it's not really much to fix or nothing to fix at all. I'm going to be better than that. And the next time I'm going to do even better. Those are the difference between the artists that stand out and the artists that end up falling behind. This industry, whether you're a buyer, a seller, or just a watcher, is not for the weak. You're going to be critiqued. You're going to be lied on. You're going to be um, praised. Sometimes the praise is going to be very well deserved. Sometimes the praise is going to be false praise. You know, sometimes people praise you, tell you you're great, and you never improve because you think, why do I need to improve? I'm already great. I've already made it. But they don't tell you the truth that you haven't made it. Your work suck. And not that they should say it in that form, but I'm just saying they don't tell you that. And when they don't tell you that, they're not doing you any favors. I don't want to hear that my work suck. Will I hear that one day? Absolutely. Will I like it when I hear it? I'm pretty much a thousand percent sure that I won't. Will I explode inside probably internally for a few seconds, but then you got to internalize it and decide what you want to do with it. Are you going to use that fuel to be angry, hateful, spiteful, lash out at the person that only told you what they thought? And keep in mind, a lot of people say, well, that's just one person opinion, but that one person probably represent another hundred that probably agree with that opinion or a thousand or two thousand just depends on how the how accurate the critique is the feedback or whatever you want to call it so if i ever say anything to someone that i've worked with it will be in a way like you know i really love that you do this 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 i would love to see this, 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 this. But I don't do that unless they ask me really or if I plan to buy from them in the future and I would like to see that for me to keep buying from them, if that makes sense. So say for instance, I get a baby and it's one little thing that I didn't really like on the baby. I might say to that artist, you know, I really, really love the baby. And this is not pertaining to this baby. I'm just talking in general. Um, I really, really love my baby and I would love to continue to buy from you. Do you think like, um, I don't know if, have you ever tried or have you did this or whatever? Some people will be like irritated, but then they'll take it in. You know, that's if you want to even go there. Sometimes you just wait and see if they change or they pick it up on their own. Sometimes we see things and I've heard artists that I've bought from say you know what I didn't really look at you know I don't really see my babies until I see them with someone else someone told me that once and I was like what does that mean what you mean you don't really see them till you see it with somebody else but then you know you get it I get it which is why a lot of times I actually this is something I do I take pictures of my dolls as I work now I didn't used to do that but I do that a lot because Sometimes I can see stuff in the pictures that I apparently just don't see when I'm actually looking at it myself. I guess because you get to see how it come across on the camera. And I don't know. It's just it's a weird thing. But, you know, so sometimes people, they, they sell a baby and they see it with somebody else. And they're like, hmm, I really don't like the way that looked after all. And then they tweak it. So sometimes you don't need to give your little opinion you can just keep your little opinion to yourself <laughs> um but anyway i'm just saying that that's that's part of why i don't want to be that way when i first started painting someone um you know tried to sabotage my 
my development and it 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 hurt me and it broke me for about two weeks I didn't want to touch anything I didn't I didn't tell everybody that was going on with me but I didn't want to touch a doll I didn't want to paint I didn't want to you know so I just kind of like backed away from doing it and it was like only my like my first real what I call real like it wasn't my practice work where I really thought I was kind of getting it at that point dolls that I sold and it was just like you know I later found out that it was all orchestrated by a huge artist slash youtuber that it was just a mess but anyway it doesn't matter who it came from to be honest it don't matter if it wasn't an artist or it wasn't connected from that moment that particular thing made me try to do better and I, I only kept getting better and better then there was a time where an artist bought my work and it was an early on and I guess they bought it to buy the, the to do the try to figure out the skin tone and it was funny because I'm not gonna, it, it, it is funny but that particular baby I felt like that baby was so freaking yellow guys like that baby was like and I actually said that when I sold it I was saying that I sold it for less because I wasn't happy with the color. I felt like it was a little too yellow. And people say, well, real babies be that yellow. So what was funny was, the reason why I say it's funny because that particular artist that bought the doll, all her babies became that same color as that doll almost. And I laughed hysterically every time I seen one because I was like, why would you copy that one? Like, why wouldn't you get one with a good, a better skin tone if you were going to try to, you know, match the color? But it was hilarious to me. But anyway, and that's another reason why artists should not worry about other artists buying their work because no one knows how you apply your color. Nobody really knows exactly what you're mixing. Unless you're painting by number, it's kind of a little bit easier to tell. But um, they tend to come out differently anyway. But... If you're a person that's going to continue to grow, you're you're not going to keep that same style. It's going to ch your style is going to change. So, if they copy that style by the time they copy that style, you've already moved on to a different way of painting. So, it doesn't it shouldn't be that big of a deal. And I had to tell myself that too because I used to be like, "Oh, they're just going to try to copy my colors." Like, so like, girl, shut up. It's not like you're all that. That's what I, you know, I have to tell myself that. Um, I was looking for him some hand mints, but, oh well. But he, he, doesn't he look so cute, guys? Like, he is so cute. I love this baby face. I, I love the way she painted his face, like, so much. Um, and this, I think, this is my favorite little hand. The open hand. And give him that little thing back. But he is just so cute. When I love him, he is going to be the cutest winter baby ever. Because I love him in like pants. And I love him in long sleeves. I like him in, you know. So I just love, 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 love him. Um, I'm really, really happy that I, I did get him done in a darker skin tone and stuff. And it's just, it's really nice. And I... I sold my painting because I didn't want to have the two and I didn't want the two competing, so to speak, for my attention. And I just thought, hey, this 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 works. So these are the socks that I was thinking of putting on because there's a lighter color right here in the um but then I noticed it has a little bow on it. But here's the thing, I think I've put these on Noah when I had them before. What you can do is, when you pull it up, nobody knows it's got a bow on it, right? Nobody's just, you're just going to see the foot of the sock. So, but I don't like it. I don't like the way it looks. I'd rather his feet be out. So, that's that. So, yeah. So, and you can do a big flip. I'm going to do a big flip. But, yeah. So, I am not, I guess I, the, I was starting out, the point of that conversation was to say that I'm not as picky as people might think. I, I will, 
I am as weird about what I love as what I don't love. So what happens is sometimes one weird outweigh the other weird. So if I am so in love with something on a baby, sometimes I will hold on to it just because of that one thing, despite what I don't like about it. You know what I mean? Like, so I'm not that picky and I'm not going to be the one to really, um, I'm not going to highlight Oh, I don't like this. I don't like that. This is my baby. I am not going to talk about my baby. Like, I am not going to talk about my baby. Like, <laughs> not to y'all. Like, okay, right? So, anyway, that's general. i just been having a lot of conversations, a lot to say lately. But I know you guys haven't seen Jersey. I want to get to showing my babies, all of my babies, a little bit more as I start I'm, 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 I'm winding down for my schedule and as I wind down for my schedule, I can eventually get into back into role playing and loving my babies. And I know I've been saying this for a while, but even when I said I was done with orders, I kind of took on some, some back projects and those projects have kind of had me tied up a little bit more than I thought, um, it would. And, but not in a bad way, like I'm not stressed or anything like that. So um, but it's just that it's just been keeping me really, really busy and I've been painting more and I'm work. Like I said, I've, I, it's just been a lot. And so I haven't had time to really settle, but I have been saying no to private orders and stuff lately. So I, I don't have, after this, I don't have anything that I have no obligation to. So I'll be sending one home this week and then I'll be down to one last one. And hopefully I can finish up uh, the head, which is Luca. I got to finish rooting that baby because when his mommy finished paying for him, he he's going to, I need him to be ready and not having to wait on me for anything else. So I really got to get dedicated to sit still and, and finish rooting him. And then once I finish rooting him, I will be really, really highly focused on finishing Grumpy um, I have Grumpy and Birdie that I need to finish because I've started them, but I haven't been able to finish them. So I need to, I'm going to be getting those things going, but then I'll have more free flexibility to really like set up. When I do role play, I have to move the, the camera around, the lights around, and you know, you just really, I just have to have the time and then I have to sit down and edit the videos and all that stuff, even if it's just a small little five minute clip, it just takes a lot of work that, you know, and I'm just by myself. I don't have anyone to help me. I don't have, you know, no one to help me. No one. No one. No one. No, I, don't, I really don't. I don't have anyone to help me. I don't have anyone to come film for me, hold the camera, hold this up. So I'm trying to do everything just by myself the best way I can. So. That's that. Um, and it's just, it's just, a, it's, sometimes it's a lot if you really, really think about it, you know, trying to hold down so much as one person and being the main go to person for your family and stuff like that. It's just, it's just, it can be overwhelming sometimes, but I don't like to push that out on to you guys. So all you guys get to see most of the time is this bubbly happy laughing crazy say whatever she feel like getting herself in trouble saying too much type person um you guys don't get to see the stressed hard working anxiety anxious depressed sometime not feeling well um person that don't have time for themselves um, struggle with so many different things internally. You guys don't get to see that. And I think sometimes people probably should be more transparent and show that to people because I think social media make everybody look like superheroes, except for the people that really like use it to get something from somebody. But if somebody just really, really show their real true self, authentic self and show some of the, the downsides to themselves. I wonder if people would start really start seeing people more as human. Um, 
You know, there are days when there are days when I don't even want to get out of bed. You know what I mean? Like, but you guys would never know that. Um, there are days when I can't, I can't, I don't want to eat. I don't want to get up and do a video. I don't want to look at my dolls. I don't want to paint. And then there's days where I feel so bad and the only thing that I can do is paint to bring me out of whatever I'm feeling at that time. And also, sometimes there's people that be close to you that will say, you are so blessed. You have this. You have that. You have this. You have that. And it's all these materialistic things. Or maybe it's not materialistic. You have people that love you. People that like you. This, that, da, da, da. But they don't understand that that is not how it works. Some days you don't know why. You just don't feel it. You just don't feel good. Some of you guys don't understand that. Some people do. But those are the things that a lot of people don't talk about. So when you get in full attack mode, and I have to keep telling myself that. This is not just for you guys. This is for me. I have to keep telling myself that, that some of these people don't feel well. And when they are posting all this vicious stuff and doing all this stuff, sometimes it's because they are evil. But sometimes it's not because they're evil. It's because they're hurting. Something is not right with them. And I know we can't save the world, but we don't have to be that person to make somebody hurt themselves or jump or feel worse than they already feel. Or we don't have to be that person to add fuel to that fire. If this person is vicious and doing evil stuff and you can't handle it and there's nothing you think you can do to make it better or you don't have the energy to take on that, walk away, delete, block, stop interacting, stop watching. At least you can say, I wasn't the one to push him over the edge. I might've wasn't there to comfort him and talk him off the cliff, but I surely wasn't the one to push him over. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, guys, <sighs> I don't even know how I got there, but I'm gonna leave it where it's at and I'm gonna end this video and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.